Good evening, everyone. What's going on? I want to open up this sermon before I go, or before I get into it, with a prayer. Father God, you are this. You are everything that we need, Lord. You fill us with the dominion of your Holy Spirit to watch over us, to guide us, put the light at our feet so we know which path to take, God. You move through us so we can show everybody the love that you have. Fill us with that Holy Spirit and guide us each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, everyone. I've done this sermon before, but I wanted to get it back on here with the better audio so I'm able to put it on Spotify and other streaming platforms. So it's the armor of God. You may have heard it before, may have not. But uh, it starts in Ephesians 6. So if you do have your Bibles and you do want to follow along, Ephesians 6 is where it is. <clears throat> what is the armor of God? Ephesians 6, 14 through 17 lists six pieces of the armor of God. Stand firm, then, with the belt, truth, belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That's what it says in Ephesians 6, 14 through 17 in the NIV version. God provides the six aspects of the Christian life, plus prayer in verse 18, to strengthen and protect us, ultimately to help us triumph in our spiritual battles. The spiritual battles, those things that we go through in our life that we just don't know how we're going to go through or how we're going to get them done. you got to understand that Christ has prepared us for the life that we live right now. Each piece of the armor is... Each piece, each piece of the armor of God is essential. And the Bible tells us how to put them on and how to use them effectively. We'll get into it right here. How to use the armor of God to defend against the attacks of Satan, the evil one, the enemy, the one that puts your life in just hell. The one that puts you down into a whole different zone where you just don't feel... Like you can accomplish anything. Something that's just pushing you down. That's the enemy. Enemies don't want us to win. They want us to keep losing. They want us to serve them. The Bible tells us that we are in a war. And our adversary, Satan, the devil, is bent on destroying us. The Apostle Paul warns us to beware of Satan's devices and his tactics. In 2 Corinthians 2.11, that's where it's at. Paul addressed this in Ephesians 6.10-20 where he talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Ephesians was one of Paul's letters written from prison. Some of us can relate from letters that we write from prison or have written from prison. Basically, during Paul's time in prison, he obviously became well acquainted with the armor worn and carried by his captors, the Romans, the Roman army. Following Isaiah's lead in Isaiah 59:17. Paul drew a powerful comparison between a soldier's armor and the spiritual armor of God. Quite similar. Paul wrote, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of His might. You see, we don't have to be discouraged by Satan's devices or his power of his, and his stealth or anything that he can put into our lives. The closer we get to Christ... The more, he's, the more Satan's going to try to push us down and knock us and make us tumble and stumble. We aren't in this battle alone. We have the access to the greatest power in the universe. Verse 11 continues, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This is a comprehensive defense strategy. And we have to pay attention to all parts of this armor that God offers. And if we do, we will be able to withhold anything the, de anything the devil throws at us and pushes against us. Every day we fight spiritual battles. In Ephesians 6 it says, 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers and the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The Bible describes unseen spiritual battles, such as the titanic battle at the end of age the Apostle John witnessed. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was any place found for them in heaven any longer. So that great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world in Revelations 12, 7 through 9. All this is happening behind the scenes in the spiritual world. A lot of things happen in the spiritual world. A lot of things we don't see. You may see a face of happiness, but deep down there is a, a real deep spiritual battle in some of our lives. Here it says, It has great influence over the physical world. Spiritual battles have great influence. When things go wrong in your life, you're, if you're dealing with a spiritual battle, it's going to come into the physical world. It's going to make things not go according to plan. And it happens. Like again, the closer you get to Christ, the more the devil's going to mess with you. Satan and the demons are invisible. And he is a master of camouflage. He is able to convince that people don't exist. Oh, he is able to convince people that he doesn't exist. And he is able to sway society and suggest, suggest wrong thoughts to us. Things we don't want to believe, but we hear it and we kind of question ourselves. Well, are we sure that's, is that God talking? Is that the devil talking? Are, and we're kind of unsure. But I tell you right now, the devil is the master of confusion. If it feels like it's going to be confusing, it's not from God. And it goes in here into Ephesians 6, 3. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. What does he mean to stand? We know what it means to stand. He was emphasizing that with God's help, we will be able to hold the line and not give up. We will not retreat. We won't give back. We won't fall back. We're not going to fall to the devil's schemes and let him win. That's what it means. We're not trying to give up an inch. We're trying to give up any part of God's territory. We are in it to win it when it comes to God. And when we rock it like that, we feel empowered by that greatest power in the universe. Now Paul starts to list the individual elements of this spiritual armor. The Bible also tells us to put on the armor of God. Here is how you can, e how you can use each piece to fight against the powers of Satan. A belt. A belt of righteousness. It goes around your waist. You guys are familiar with the belt. The first piece of equipment to put on. And it secures all the other pieces together. All the other pieces of the armor. Wearing the belt showed that the soldier was ready for action. We're ready to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We're, we're on the battlefield. We are ready to do this. And the soldier would do it when he, and when he was ready for action since he was only loosening his belt when he was off duty. At the end of the day, we're off work, whatever. We're getting ready for our shower. We're doing all kinds of things. We take off our belt, you know, and that kind of disconnects our armor. As Jesus said... Right. Knowing God's truth is a surefire antidote to Satan's lies and deception. And to be truly ready for the battle, we must completely be truthful to ourselves in our own inner being, our inner being, like our Creator. As Jesus said, your word is truth in John 17, 17. Paul exhorted to speak the truth in love in Ephesians 4, 15. In these perilous end times, a Christian soldier must love the truth for the protection against the rulers and the lawless one, Satan. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 10, you can see the love of truth. Love of the truth. 
Next, Paul tells us to put on the, breast, on, on the breastplate of righteousness. Without righteousness, we leave ourselves open to Satan's attacks. Without covering something on our chest, we have any way. These are our vital organs, you know, in war. If we have nothing covering these vital organs, our heart being the main one that pumps the blood through our body, we are open for attack. We are open to death. To be righteous is first to all to be is to repent and to be forgiven of our sins through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that justifies and makes us right with God. That's Romans 5, 9. Then in gratitude we should strive to do what is right in God's eyes. Am I right? Let's do what's right in God's eyes. Let's do right when nobody's looking. Psalm 119, 172 tells us that God's commandments are righteousness. So to be righteous is to obey God's laws and love. Obeying God is beneficial. It's not a burden. It's not a job. It's not a chore. It's, you should feel good that you want to obey God and His commandments if you're a true Christian soldier. And you can find that by being, obeying God is beneficial, not burdensome in Deuteronomy 10.13 and 1 John 5.3. Isaiah 59, 17 says that God himself puts on the righteousness as a breastplate. This may be part of what inspired Paul to use that analogy. Isaiah 59 starts by explaining your iniquities, which are your sins, have separated you from God. In verse 2, iniquity is the opposite of righteousness. Good and bad. If you're doing it right or if you're doing it wrong. So when we give in to sin without repenting, just keep on sinning and sinning and just acting like nothing's going to happen. We are removing our breastplate, making ourselves vulnerable and leaving ourselves open to the demon's attacks. Kind of like a bulletproof vest. When a police officer wears a bulletproof vest, they are in that battlefield, the battlefield of the streets, uh, out on patrol, doing the beat. They have that covering all their vital organs in case of an attack. That's a physical attack of the world. But here we are talking about the spiritual attack, Satan and the demons that surround us every single day and cause severe spiritual attacks. One of my favorites, shoes. We got to keep our spiritual shoes. The word preparation, denoting readiness, reminds us that we are eager to preach the gospel of peace. The word of God. The church of God is sent to announce the good news of God's kingdom, which will spread His way of peace around the whole world. Having our own spiritual shoes on, we will be ready to spread the news to others. Ready to hit the street, on your feet, just go out and share the word. Share the word with people. When our faith in God's power and love is strong, it is impossible for Satan to break through. He can't get us when we all band together as Christian soldiers, men, women, and children. All of us together, we can override the devil. Our shield will cross out any blow he tries to land. He will not be able to strike us and win. Faith means more than just believing that God exists. It includes a firm belief that everything that we do for God is truly for our good. And everything that God does is truly for our good. Also, faith is the absolute conviction that God will always do what He has promised. You can find that in Romans 4, 18-21. Faith protects us in many ways. Think about Daniel in the lion's den. Faith was like a force field to protect Daniel from those vicious teeth. He made it out alive. His faith in God persevered. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were protected from that fiery furnace. They stood and said they would not bow before any other god. They stood against their own so-called people in charge or rulers. And they were put in that fiery furnace. Their faith in God and His eternal plan allowed them to say that they would, they would obey God. They 
believed and had so much faith that they said, I will believe in the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. I'll, I'll go in this fiery furnace. Yeah, they were probably scared. But God persevered them. Even if He didn't protect them physically, He did it. He was there spiritually. And then physically, they came up out of that furnace. The shield of faith. Faith is powerful and protects us not only from our physical dangers, but from even more of the challenging spiritual temptations and dangers. The shield of faith is not just for personal protection. The Roman soldiers had a strategy of joining their shields together. If we join our shields, that is we strengthen each other with our faith, building up and serving as we are able. We will be able to take on any challenge. Iron sharpens iron, you've heard it. When we band together as Christian soldiers, we can strengthen our faith. I feed off my wife. She feeds off her friends. It just keeps going down. Once we're all together, we can all talk. We can all strategize how we can just build our faith to where the devil cannot break in. The helmet of salvation. And take the helmet of salvation, Ephesians 6, 17. When a soldier of the apostles' day suited up for battle, the helmet was the last piece to be put in place. In fact, without the helmet, a soldier would be so vulnerable that the rest of the armor would be of little use. Yeah, you got most, you got your feet and your legs and everything and your chest is covered, but a shot to the head, none of this matters. All this drops. Paul's statement, take the helmet of salvation, is the shortest description given to any of the pieces of armor. Almost like common sense. It's required, almost no explanation. Because you know, headshot, you're, you know, you're done. Arrow through the head, a bullet through the head, you're going to drop. The rest of this does not matter. Protect your head like football players. Protect your head in anything that you get yourself involved in. you got to make yourself not so vulnerable to the things around you. You got to take into consideration that life will get harder the closer you get to Christ. Life will get more difficult, but doable. It's going to make you feel like you are not able to get through these things. You may think that you are missing an armor that you have in your life that you don't have it all together. So how can you protect yourself against Satan's attacks? And so you just kind of blatantly just give yourself to God. You give yourself to the demons. You let them win. But I'm telling you, every single one of you has something. And when we band together, that armor comes together. It can be your own personal armor, or be, it can be I have something, and my wife has something, and another person has something, and we come together, and we all have that armor. But don't let yourself start thinking that you don't have any kind of protection. Pray for that protection. Ask God for that protection. That protection is going to come to you. He doesn't want to see us lose. He doesn't want to see us fail. He already knows the devil and his tactics, and he knows what the devil is trying to do in our lives. And once you become a solid Christian soldier and you start learning the Word, I'm learning the Word more, I'm reading more, and trying to figure things out, the faith grows. It builds up so big and it makes you able to stand and withstand anything the devil comes at you with it won't be easy like i said but you can get through it how does the bible define salvation salvation means being saved receiving deliverance for christians salvation means receiving deliverance for the penalty of sin and we all fall short and we all sin but just because we sin doesn't mean we can't be protected by that armor of God. The sword of the Spirit. I don't know why I did that, but that's... The sword of the Spirit, like the Roman gladius, can also help us to conquer our enemies, including the most difficult one, our entrenched human weakness. In Hebrews 4.12 explains, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. 
piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Remember how Jesus used the word of God to defeat Satan in Matthew 4, 10 through 10, or 4, 1 through 10. Christ used scripture quotes three times. Using scripture, I had bad dreams sometimes where I, it's nightmarish. It's super bad. And I just, be gone in the name of Jesus. You know, and sometimes I can't even get the words out of my dream, but that's how I do it. I use God. I use scripture. I'll start saying prayers that I've read and, and just to, to make the devil flee. So when Jesus did that, he used the scripture quotes three times. He brought to mind the scriptures that dealt with the situation, that showed what he should do, and that, it, that strengthened the resolve. And so should we. Our sword, our sword won't stay sharp on its own. We must continually sharpen it with regularly and focus on Bible study. And by studying the Word of God daily, we can have all of God's wisdom in the forefront of our minds. Again, not all of God's wisdom will never know what God does. But we will have God's wisdom instilled in us in the forefront of our minds ready to help us make wise choices and fight off Satan's attacks. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus, the good news, for which I am the ambassador in chains that in it I may, sp I may speak boldly, and as I ought to speak, I should be speaking boldly. I'm learning with this preaching. I'm studying, I'm reading things, and weighing this option and that option, and seeing what this article says about this article says, and see how it correlates with the Bible, and I'm able to find God's Word. I'm able to find out how I should be living. The church and each of us individually moves forward on our knees. Praying reminds us of the battle. It reminds us of the source of our strength and defense. And reminds God that we are fully committed to following Him as obedient, faithful Christian soldiers. Prayer and Bible study are the most powerful tools for combating Satan's weapons. Read your Bible. Knock the dust off your Bible. A couple verses a day. There's, there's some parts of the Bible that you just can't put down. At least for me, I can't put down. I started reading the book of Acts recently, and I can't put it down. I, I'm really interested in it. When I started reading the book of John, I got really into it. I couldn't put it down. There are some great stories and, and information and faith-building words in there that I never would expect expected to find in just one book. With all this armor in place, we will, we will be protected. But it's up to us to wear it daily. We can't wear it one day and take it off the next day and think everything's going to be okay. We can't go to church on a Sunday and think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is going to be okay. We have to constantly put it on. Not just one piece. The piece that is easier to wear. The piece that's easier to bear. You've got to put it all on. And there's going to be days where you don't feel like you want to do it. Or you don't feel like you can do it. But you are going to make, a pro you will make progress if you keep pushing. It's hard on some days when you're tired or you must have worked late the night before and you got to get up and do it all over again. You know, going to work. Going to do activities with the family. Uh, anything that you do, wear your armor of God. Don't be afraid to tell people about God. I get it. In the beginning, it was hard to bring up Jesus at a family function because there are family members I have that <laughs> don't want to hear it. That doesn't mean it ain't what needs to be heard. Take it every single place that you go. Kids need to go to school and talk about Jesus. Kids need to go to their friend's house and talk about Jesus. If some people don't realize how deep they are in their faith, if they don't realize how important it is to express their faith, 
it'll just get bypassed. We need to keep strength in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to let people know who the Creator is and how strong and, and faithful we can become the closer we get and the closer that we get to others and we build that band of Christian brothers and sisters. At this altar, we learn to take on the whole armor of God. At this altar, we learn to be strong in the power of His might. At this altar, we come to know that there is no weapon formed against us and none of it shall prosper. That every conversation spoken against the Lord shall be condemned. you got to give it up to the Lord. So if you're out there watching and those of you here, Repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, now I now follow your command to put on the full armor of God because I know that my battle is not against flesh or blood but against the rulers, against of a, the rulers and, the and the authorities and the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the unseen world. Now if you said that, that's the best step you got right there. You make that first step. Reach out to me if you ever want to talk more about this or how it might relate to your life or, put you, or where it, it relates to the point you are at in your life. I'm a smart man, but I don't know it all. But I'm reading, these, I'm reading the Bible and I'm learning things and I'm trying to, fill it, trying to figure it all out and, and get a great feel of it. So I thank you guys for watching. The Armor of God, I will put this up on Spotify uh, in a few days so you can listen to it while you're at work or driving to work or in the car. I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in for uh, my sermon here on Armor of God, Save to Serve Ministries. 2024. God bless every single one of you. I hope you have a wonderful day and Happy New Year if I haven't seen you yet. God bless every single one of you.